I live in the tropics, have all my life. Got a big Queenslander and a hot little wife. I don't raise a sweat till it's 40 degrees. You can put me on ice, but I don't freeze. I've got high blood pressure and my heart beats fast. Live for the moment, never thought it would last. But the way things are going, I'll be eating crow. Cause here I am staring down the new four Staring down the barrel of the new four I got sixteen songs sort of in me, and I'm right smack dab where I want to be. songs so I better not talk too much I've been told by everybody on the cruise their favorite song <laughs> and please make sure you play it tonight they said so how long have we got <laughs> built a leaky arm? What if Jesus had problems with his father? What if Paul hadn't been that brightest spark? What if your dad never knew your mother? What if my folks had lived in Timbuktu? What if you hadn't worn that night I first laid eyes on you. What if God never played with firecrackers? What if heaven was the low and not above? What if life never had a meaning? What if you and I never fell in love? What if 
of Shakespeare, been slightly dyslexic. What if Newton hadn't seen that apple fall? What if Freud hadn't shared his little secret? What if Einstein had no sense of time at all? What if I'd been too shy to pop the question? What if you didn't read between the lines? What if we hadn't spent that night together on a blanket underneath the pine? There's 19 albums of songs to choose from when I put on a show, right? That's a lot of tunes. But I always make sure I include the songs that have got me this far. And the next two songs would have to come in that category.
Track of time 
that I'd be singing that song in 2018, I would have written it quite a bit lower. <laughs> and there are more in the night that I would have written slower. <laughs> However, I have a new album out and I've been itching to play you a few songs from that. Um, it was pointed out to me that there'd been a bit of a break between new product. The last original album was 2011 an album called The Speed of Life. And uh, I will point out though, I haven't been sitting on my hands. In 2012, I did another album called Kindred Spirit. And that was an album where I focused on fellow Australian singer-songwriters. A lot that you probably wouldn't have heard and some you would. And I just wanted to shed light on some of these great writers we have around. That was called Kindred Spirit. And then of course, North, my landmark album, turned 25 years, and that seemed to me an appropriate time to remix, remaster, and take it out on tour. And it was a fabulous tour, and at the end of it, we shot a double DVD live performance. So there's two more projects. And then, of course, someone turned 60. <laughs> and you can't let that sort of slip by, can you? So out came, say, <laughs> you reckon, so out came 60 Summers, a two CD collection of, uh, of sort of career overview plus a couple of new songs. Which brings us up now to 2018 and a new album called From the Back Country. And I called it From the Back Country because it has a sort of a poetic feel about it to me in as much as the back country is the sort of unused portion of the, of the property, right? It's, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad country, it's just lying fallow, it's not used. And uh, I felt in many ways my creative spirit was doing that in the, in the place in between. Uh, opening song for the album uh, is, uh, has done very well for us, chart-wise, uh, it's called One Life. Right. 
one has to do You can save it, you can spend it I'll leave that to you We get some young We get some old We get three score years and ten or so we're told In the period between the albums, I did a bit of travel, and uh, those experiences turned up in songs. This one's very clear, very specific. It, it came from a trip to Broome, where I went to visit a good friend of mine, Alan Pigram. Are you familiar with the Pigram Brothers? Yeah. Fantastic group. If you're not, go on uh, whatever, whatever form of uh, music supplier you have, whether it's Spotify or Apple or a good old CD. Um, tune in to the Pigman Brothers, you're going to love them. And uh, while I was over there for the week, um, they had a gig up in Derby, and I thought I'd tag along, and I'm mighty glad I did, because uh, it led to me writing this song, and I do believe that the record company wants it to be the next single. So, if you sit on your hands and don't applaud, I'll have to find something else for the next thing. We'll see how we fare. Sim, 
northern highway Guitar lady in the back Strumming through our favorite tracks It's all John Prime from Wilmarion If you can survive the entertainment industry, hospitality's got to be easy. <laughs> so we bought an old building and I project managed the transition from this shell to a wonderful, funky new restaurant. In the interim, I think I just about went mad. I. Um, I knew I'd gone far enough when one night about two o'clock in the morning, I was thinking, who could I call, who could I call to dispense with the, the two I see on the job? And I was thinking, bikies. <laughs> I figured it's time, Graham, to get back to your music business. <laughs> And uh, it has been a great and successful venture, but in that time, to try and sort of stay creative, as if it wasn't enough, I decided I would write a musical. So I set to work for sort of a, the book of the musical, the characters, and uh, I got into about 2009, 2010, and I went, who can I call <laughs> to dispense with me? I'm mad. So in the end, this is one of the remaining songs from the musical that was never written. <laughs> At this minute I'll tune up because I know it's a very discerning audience. I've been told by the other artists that Tuning is most important with you guys.
something, but ask what it is, and they can't explain what well, used to their own. And I hope they find something half as good. so much on the uh, recording side. He works uh, uh, with the church there and does all the uh, music for the church. I mentioned before uh, about 60 Summers being an album uh, sort of that uh, looked at my whole catalogue but included some new songs. I'm going to do one of those new songs for you now because you know when you're turning 60 Everyone says, what does it feel like turning 60? <laughs> I mean, generally they ask you before you've turned 60, and all you can say is, I have no idea. So I figured, I, my answer generally was, feels exactly the same, nothing at all, it's just another year. Then I look back at my writing in the period leading up to my 60th birthday, and the songs that I wrote were, well, Travelling at the Speed of Life, I'd written before that. Sixty Summers, The Oldest Kid in Town, and this next one called Mount Everest, and you'll get the drift of it, I think, pretty quickly when you hear the opening line. Strong. 
wounded Back in 1969 When I was still a kid Thought I'd be an astronaut For at least a week or two But that big old moon Could not compete with Sweet Lindy Moon that my career began with North in 1988, but in fact I have been doing a lot of songwriting and recording prior to that. It's just that I never found the song that uh, uh, launched my career. But this song predates North. It goes back to about uh, 1980, 1981, and it was uh, one of the group of songs, including a little further north, that I took to several record companies and they all said, nah, 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 we don't want that one, thank you. It wasn't until 88 when North came through that all of a sudden those songs started to, um, to get attention. It's funny the way the world turns. What it meant, of course, was I had a whole catalogue of songs ready to go once North had happened. And everyone's saying, how does he do it? An album every year. Well, I'll be doing it for a while. So this song, I, I love performing it because it's got a nautical flavour and here we are on the cruise. And uh, it, it, when I was at Sydney uh, about to embark on the boat, I walked right past the, um, the building that inspired it, the old seaman's home there. And uh, there was a character that we had young children would go to Circular Quay quite regularly and uh, we'd generally bump into him and this was his story. Splash and the rattle 
of anchors and jeans. Tropicale, and it was the first country and eastern record in Australia. <laughs> this is one of the songs from that. It tells the story of uh, Solomon Islanders. Because where I grew up in Mackay, it was the largest population of Solomon Islands, Islanders outside of the islands themselves. Uh, they were brought here for the cane industry, and um, had made a, a, a real contribution to the Mackay community and I thought it'd be lovely to capture that in song. So this is one you can help us out with. Get in the island mood. Anyone buy a grass skirt today they could come down the floor? With. No? Oh no skirt at all, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Captain Fly said, 
seven years old the same to me. Singing with the heart, and when all the voices come together, it's just this incredible sound. And I got a feeling we're going to get an incredible sound out of you tonight. Because there's a lot of gentlemen here who aren't singing yet because they think they sing out of tune. But I want them to just sing with their heart tonight and fill up the bottom end of this song. The ladies are doing just great. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. issues, but I do not try to take them too seriously. <laughs> Oh, 
job really super hard and the crew here is just fabulous. You've got Dave Henderson on monitors. Thank you Dave. You're wonderful. On stage we've got Tony Hanneman. Thank you Tony. And on front of house sound this guy looks after the quality of sound that you hear so please let him know if you've enjoyed it. His name is Ray Moss. Big thank you too to Mick and Elaine and the, uh, the Manoff family, Maori Sells, and Cruise and Country team. Without them, this fabulous event would not take place. And I think they deserve our respect and thanks.
for getting me back because I gotta tell you I have been threatened with being thrown overboard if I don't do the next song I don't think it's bikies on the boat I'm not sure oh tough crowd requests I received for this at various breakfasts, lunches, dinners. Um, there is a gentleman in the audience tonight who's it's amazing. He basically named his daughter after the character in the song because his nickname is Dingo. And his daughter is called Princess. I'm not sure whether that's like, only he could tell. Are you here, Dingo, my lady? Yeah, woo! All oh, right. So is it really Princess? Like, is that her birth certificate name? No, it's Billy. Oh. I've been taken for a ride. Everybody call him Dingo. He didn't seem to mind me Aboriginal and Asian blood Ran 
had 50-50 in his veins With skin like saddle leather An inscrutable kind of smile Beneath the brim of his Akubra He had the dreaming in his eyes His daughter Mary Ann, home for Christmas at the station, from a boarding school in Cairns, with such a perfect face and figure, the boys would blush when she walked by, behind her back they called her Princess. She had the distance in her eyes Oh, the ringer and the princess The dingo and the deer I'll tell you their story If you want to hear December rain fell with a vengeance From a cyclone in the Gulf Bone dry gullies turned to rivers While the plains became a sea of mud So the boss called everyone together The family and the station hands To open gates and knock down fences Give the stock a fighting chance Well, the princess, she was out there Riding right alongside the men Leading horses up to safety Trying to bring the stragglers in Till she heard a wild a little further down the way A mare was trying to cross a gully And his foal was being washed away Now the young have always been impulsive The princess had no second thoughts she rode a mountain to that gully Trying to save the drowning horse But in the midst of the raging waters Her pony lost its step and fell And with her foot caught in the stirrup Princess disappeared as well. Now Dingo saw the whole thing happen, and like a man possessed, he rode straight into that swollen gully, about a hundred yards below. And by the time the others got there. All hope of finding her was gone To Dingo staggered from the water With the princess in his arms Oh, the ringer and the princess The Dingo and the deer I'll tell you their story if you want to hear now the princess owns the station the dad the boss has long since died and although she never married 
Bingo's always by her side Still the gossips talk about them Even after all these years About the ringer and the princess The dingo and the deer About the ringer and the princess The dingo and the deer Thank you.